before you check your eyes and wonder when Jackie got a British accent, no, I'm not Jackie. I'm Lucy Clarkson, friend of Jackie and fellow frequent traveler. When I think about my home of South Florida, images of palm trees, sun-drenched beaches, and fruit-infused cocktails come to mind. And while cities like Miami are known for their boisterous nightlife, some vacationers long for the laid-back island live-in. That's why the Florida Keys is one of the most sought-after vacation destinations in the United States. Living in Miami, I'm very familiar with the Keys, which is one of the reasons she has recruited me for this mission. And what is that mission? To learn everything about the access point to this tropical paradise, the Florida Keys. Key West International Airport, formerly known as Meacham Field, has a history in aviation dating back to 1913, when Domingo Rosillo del Toro set the world record for the longest flight over water when he flew from Key West to Cuba. During World War II, Meacham Field was an important air base used by the US Army and US Navy. And in 1953, it was turned over to Monroe County, who renamed it Key West International Airport. Today, Key West International serves 14 US cities, taking nearly 1 million travelers from their one runway, eight gate airport every single year. I met up with Richard to learn more about Key West International. So we're surrounded by history. You mentioned that this airport has a lot of history. Fill me in a little bit. It does have a lot of history. This airfield's been here since about 1925. It was the birthplace of Pan Am in that the Commodore aircraft, known as the Flying Boat, they were operating here in 1920s. And uh, the US mail flew out of here, one of the first destinations that the mail flew from. Now here today, it's bringing in and moving about a million people a year. And we actually have service from Chicago, Philly, Dallas, Washington, DC, New York, LaGuardia, Miami, and Charlotte. We have mainline 737 aircraft coming in, as well as the Airbus A319. We've got Embraer 175s, and that's all on a daily basis. So people have this misconception that Key West Airport's probably not even in Key West. It's like miles away, like every other airport. But we really are close by to everything. Oh no, you fly into Key West, you're no more than five minutes away from anything that you need to get to, whether it's your hotel, or the wonderful beaches that are here, or the beautiful restaurants. You're five minutes away from anything you come to see. Are you seeing more locals, like Florida locals, or international people, or well, is it a mix? We do get quite the mix of folks. With the intrastate service through Silver Airlines, we get the Florida contingent, but the vast majority of our visitors are from the Northeast, up through Chicago, over to Texas, into New York. Key West is really a melting pot for all kinds of people. It's a great time for everybody, and I think that variety of people that come here is what makes it so much fun. While most people fly into Key West International, if you decide to take the drive, there's a few things you should know. First, you're going to want to pad your travel time. The overseas highway completed in 1938 connects a string of keys and coral rock with 113 miles of bridges and roadways and is one of the most beautiful drives in the country. But if you're traveling from the upper and middle keys during peak season, US 1 can get busy. So you may need to add some time to your schedule and plan accordingly. Especially if you stop for that shameless selfie. Of course you can save yourself the troubles of traffic by flying in from one of the 14 US cities offering direct flights to Key West International. With a rented scooter or a golf cart, you can essentially go anywhere and see everything, or go nowhere and do nothing, whatever you prefer. With Key West International's smaller facility, it should be expected that some of the luxury services you've come to expect at the larger airports are missing. These include curbside check-in, sky cap, showers, currency exchange, and duty-free services. Jackie loves the perks of Power Hub airports, but I find small airports have their own fair share of benefits. And honestly, you probably won't even miss them. Here, there are no mile-long walks to faraway terminals. Everything is located within five minutes stroll. Due to the airport's smaller size. I suggest arriving one and a half hours early for your flight, which means more time to relax and do a little shopping. The shops here are filled with local souvenirs unique to this island's artist community. They've got great gifts for friends, kids, or just an additional treat for you. 
If you're driving your own car, you can leave it at the long-term parking lot for $15 a day or $84 a week. Check out the Key West International website for more information. And if you're renting a car, don't worry, all of the companies are now on site. Now we can't go any further in this travel talk before addressing the pandemic in the room. COVID has changed airlines and airports all over the world. Monroe County requires all persons over the age of six to wear a facial covering inside businesses and whenever away from their home and unable to engage in social distancing. The airport is no exception. But just because you're mandated to wear a mask doesn't mean you have to resign yourself to looking like you just walked out of a hospital. Companies and designers have popped up during this time to not just supply a demand, but stylize it. If everything else in your closet is designer, why shouldn't your mask be? Some fashion-forward masks I like are VPL, Carla Coletto, and Acris. They are effective and chic. But life and travel goes on. Key West International Airport and Florida Keys Marathon International Airport continue to operate and adjust accordingly. With one runway measuring 5,076 feet, Key West International has the distinction of hosting the shortest runway in North America, regularly used by Boeing 737s. In fact, all of the planes that I've seen here are smaller commercial aircrafts, with the largest being the Airbus A319 used by American Airlines and Delta. Another Jackie no-go, my girl loves wide bodies, your Airbus A350-900 or Boeing 77200. But one of the reasons she chose me for this mission, I have a lot of experience with smaller island style airports. So I've learned a few tricks to survive the smaller aircrafts. The Airbus A319 flies from Dallas to Key West and seats 124 passengers. The best seats are located in row 14 which is a standard economy class. On Delta's Boeing 737-700, a 124-passenger aircraft, the best seats are located in rows 10 and 17 behind the seatless exit rows. For the smaller planes like Delta's 78-passenger CRJ-700 and American's ERJ-175, most seats are fairly equal. The seats at the front of each section are generally preferable for their extended legroom, but have a slightly reduced seat width due to the tray table storage and the immovable armrest. Also, if you're a window seat person, you may want to consider an aisle instead, since the curvature of the smaller planes can reduce the overall body space on the window side. Whatever your aircraft, a little research on sites like Seat Guru can help you decide which seat will provide the best flight to and from Key West. When it comes to booking your flight, it's wise to use the same care and precaution to save yourself some spending cash. Flights to the Florida Keys can be budget friendly, ranging from $200 to $300 for a round trip flight. But these tickets are often for basic economy, which means paying extra for check bags and being placed in the final boarding group. It's a good idea to get these details from the airline prior to the day of departure. However, status and membership comes with perks, and some of these less preferable aspects of basic economy can be overridden with a co-branded credit card, which can put you in a better boarding group, giving you earlier access to overhead bins and can provide you with the free checked bags and other bonuses, which can make flying basic economy less of a headache. The Florida Keys are vacationers destination for good reason. Delicious seafood fresh from the ocean, gorgeous beaches, fishing, snorkeling and diving, which means you probably like to stay a few days to enjoy everything Key West has to offer. A travel agent can put together a package that will include flights, transportation, hotel accommodations, even speciality tours like guided fishing trips. Some of the major airlines travel experts offer vacation packages, which combined with an airline membership or an airline branded credit card can get you maximum discounts, maximum points, a little footwork and go a long way towards keeping you off your feet while you're on vacation. While Key West is the most well-known destination, there are many other amazing spots along this stretch of tropical paradise. Smack 
smack-dab in the middle of it all, we have the Florida Keys Marathon International Airport, a popular option amongst private jets and elite visitors. The laid-back landing strip with its brand-new fixed-based operating building and 12,000-square-foot hangar caters perfectly to their clientele. It also services commercial and industrial helicopters for the Middle Keys. We're in the middle of the Florida Keys. We're at what they would identify as mile marker 50. So we're about 50 miles from Key West, and we're about another 50 miles back to Key Largo. We have a variety of what's called general aviation aircraft or GA aircraft. We currently don't have any commercial service at this airport, but we have a variety of smaller single engine type aircraft. Uh, we see a lot of the corporate type jet aircraft that come in on a regular basis. Midweek, some Somewhat quiet, but towards the weekends, we can see anywhere from 10 to 12 jets that come in on a Friday. They'll stay the weekend and they'll go get lunch, do a little shopping, maybe go to a beach. Obviously, if you're a fisherman, you can't go to a destination such as this and beat the fishing down here. It's amazing. While Monroe County has done its best to maintain the sleepy beach town vibes Key West is known for, big upgrades at Key West International are well underway, with the intention of making your airport experience comfortable and convenient. So I'm really impressed with the airport, but you've got a lot of new things happening. I heard like upgrades and just new exciting things. We, we do, we have an all new baggage system going in. Oh, wow. We've got a new hold room and new restrooms and family facilities going in, a new pet relief station for the pets. We We've got some new U.S. Customs building going in. So on the runways, the Taxiway Alpha project's going on right now. So a lot of upgrades and improvements, over $24 million this year alone. What I find interesting is I'm, I'm not from Miami, but I live in Miami, and it's literally a 20-minute flight to get here. The vibe's so different. Tell me about it. I mean, it's just... You get here and it just feels so different. Yeah, you get here and it's it's definitely not like Miami. It's a wonderful, relaxed island feel down here. I think the people are just very friendly and it's all about the relaxation and the fun on the water. Well, Richard, thank you so much. Thank hey, you, Tom. Thank you. Pleasure Have a plane meeting to you. Catch. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Whatever your reason is for visiting Key West International Airport, do me a favor and give yourself enough time to make the most of it. You know what they say, an ocean breeze puts the mind at ease. Now Key West, I will be back, but next time I will be bringing Jackie with me.